Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll see which small cap fund to get invested in the stock market. All of us would have got invested in the market and uh, there are a lot of uh, researches happening online to find out which one is the best um, small cap mutual fund available. And let's uh, try to find out which one is the best one available with the help of few markets. Uh, we'll try to scale up uh, a range of uh, 50 score points and we'll see which mutual fund stands where and we'll try to find out which one is the best. All of these are tried and tested in the market and it's got like very good reviews from every customer. But let's try to evaluate in another scenario and another perspective and see how uh, which one functions to be the best. And this is my own way of uh, evaluating a mutual fund. Please consult with your financial consultant before investing and do your due diligence before investing. Let's get started. So we must know first what a small cap fund is. So the small cap fund is nothing but a consolidation or a combination of mutual funds which come under the small cap category. So any company that has a um, turnover of less than 5000 crores, they come under the small cap category and all these funds are put together under the basket as small cap mutual funds. So when you get into your um, investment strategy or your investment planning, you get to start with an SAP or with a lump sum. And the first thing that comes to your attention or what draws your attention are the small cap funds because you get to see a very good uh, performance rating over like 30%, 40% of returns in the market. So that tend to normally attract you or impress you. However, as a consolidated phase, if you see over a period of 10 years or if you are invested for a horizon of 20 years, you get to see that uh, results or the reports normally states that anywhere between 15% is considered to be a very good return in the market. You get a normal 6% of uh, from your uh, savings bank account and um, anything further that you can go with other types of uh, investing methods. We'll discuss that in another video. But anything other than that, if you want to get into a mutual fund, you can go into an index fund. That's the most safest and ideal way of investing. Besides that, if you want to get into it, then we've got a debt fund as well where the uh, uh, growth is as par with your uh, savings account, but maybe like a few 2 or 3% better than your savings account. Your money is parked into debt funds and uh, into government equities, government bonds and stuff. Or otherwise, it's going to be uh, your large cap funds, which can be like really sturdy during market uh, downtimes. So even if there is a great fall, your script would normally try to function really good. So uh, it's always better to go with uh, funds which are like really strong and sturdy in the market so that you can avoid or escape from all these uh, markets ups and downs. So all of us know like stock market is a game of ups and downs. So uh, it's always wise or better to be you get invested into large cap funds provided you are in your age bracket of uh, 40s and 40 plus so that you are having a very stable and secure uh, way of uh, compounding your money. But if you are in your uh, early stages of investing in your 18 or in your 20 um, age uh, limit, then it is always better to go with your small cap funds. As a rule of thumb, normally uh, financial investors give you a consultation as uh, try to go with 50% of uh, large cap, 25% of mid cap or 35% of mid cap on the least, 15% uh, as small cap. But I would suggest as a beginner, if you are a amateur who are just starting up into your investing journey, try to go with an alternative way because you've got a lot of age to try and trust everything out in the market. So there are a lot of small cap funds available in the market. So there are over uh, 40 to 50 AMCs available and everyone has got a small cap uh, mutual fund in them. So our target here is to find out which one is the best mutual fund or in the small cap category and where to get our money invested or where to get our money compounded. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out, uh, you can see here in this list which I'm showing here, there's a lot of uh, mutual funds which are there in the uh, top ratings. So these five are uh, as the top rated funds. So we are going to find out where should we invest in these uh, mutual funds. You could see the three years uh, CAGR value is given as uh, they are uh, ordered in their uh, from the highest to the lowest. We'll try to find out which one is the better one among these by using different parameters here. So the first one that I'm going to see here is the performance history. So that's the first thing which you normally look into. It. You could see here on the chart that's uh, on the left side, that's your own year return. You could see that funds that are produced over 51% of uh, returns as well. However, on your uh, three years, uh, five year scale, you could see the same fund has given an average of uh, 25%. So uh, these are the two different uh, charts you could see here and you'll be able to evaluate how a fund is performing and the one year return it shows up a different value and the five year return shows up a different value here. So the first thing that I'm going to see is the fund age. 
So uh, the performance history shows that uh, over the five year horizon, you could see here like a uh, yeah, mutual fund, which is like given up a better performance. You could see here that there's a tab here as a return since launch. So it shows your age of your uh, mutual fund along with your uh, returns. So the first thing that I'm noticing here is uh, the since the inception of the fund. So the fund that draws my attention here is uh, Tata Mutual Fund. You could see here that it is given over 27% uh, of uh, growth over a period of five year horizon. However, there are other funds which are uh, taken up a rally or given up really good during the uh, COVID breakout. So that's the time when almost all of the funds boomed up. For instance, Quant is a very good performing fund. However, it uh, was like uh, not doing really well earlier days. So after when it was with escorts, so when it was like renamed into Quant from escorts, that really zoomed up after your uh, COVID uh, breakout. And it was all because of the, uh, the AMC managers who do the rule there. So their job is to find out really cool uh, script and just add them into their portfolio. That would be like performing really well and giving us a very good results. So we need to look out like uh, the which one is like taking up a first place in the uh, fund values. So in this list, I would give the first priority. This is my preference. As I'm repeating again, this is my preference. You may have your own suggestion or ideas. So this is my first preference. I would go with uh, Tata. I would rate Tata as like five points and uh, I would give uh, Nippon as uh, four points, followed by uh, HSBC with uh, three points and uh, followed by um, HDFC with four and uh, Quant with five. However, Quant has given the best performance in the last three years or in the last four years after COVID breakout. You could see that like Quant has always been in the first number list. And you could see here that even in the last five years or in the last uh, one year return, you will be able to see that uh, Quant is topping up the chart. However, uh, if you see happen to see the return since inception, the case is different here. So that's the score which I'm trying to give here. We'll try to add up a scorecard here and see how that's performing out. And we'll see at the end of this, out of 50, which fund shows uh, or scores the maximum value and we'll try to evaluate which one is like better than this. So the next one, what I'm trying to do here is the net asset value. So the net asset value is nothing but the funds uh, overall portfolio count. So that's going to be in crores. So you could see here uh, among all of these, uh, Tata is showing the least. So a fund value that is like uh, the AUM of this uh, AMC, if the AUM is like really less, it becomes really easier for the fund manager to uh, um, sell a script or like switch over the funds to a different uh, portfolio asset or buying and selling of a different script that becomes easier for him. So the lower the uh, fund value, it's easier for the uh, manager to maintain it or to uh, keep it into a pool. So each mutual fund will have certain kind of uh, limitation. It could be like given up a, like 95% of that has to be invested into equities. There should be a 5% pool always kept as cash equivalent. So that if anyone is like trying to withdraw the funds or they're trying to retrieve back from their account, this is normally sent back to the investor as into their as a credit to their account. So in that case, Tata has got the least minimum value. So that uh, AM value is uh, giving us an added advantage to Tata. So in this case, I would always say that uh, Tata is number one in this list because their AUM is really uh, young and they'll be able to churn out a lot of uh, profits when they're trying to uh, do the asset allocation. It will be easier for them to sell and buy script easier rather than script which are like really huge. For example, Nippon is having a, a 40,000 plus uh, AUM. It becomes really tedious for them to sell scripts which are over 20,000 crores and again invest them into another one. So in this case, I would always give a plus to Tata. I would give like five points to Tata and then I would give uh, second priority would be to Quant. Then third comes HSBC. Fourth would be your HDFC and fifth would be your Nippon. So this will be the scorecard for this. This will be five, four, three, two and one. So now that we have completed like 10 marks out of this, you could see the scorecard here, how much we are uh, standing on each of these funds. The next one comes is your uh, risk metrics. There are a lot of parameters here which are available. We need to know what all of these are and we need to uh, take it into consideration of uh, all of these parameters and take a decision on which fund is uh, taking up a better value. So the first thing comes is your uh, sharp ratio. So this is uh, nothing but uh, uh, the return or the risk that is getting calculated in the market uh, during the uh, uh, volatility. So when there is a market volatility happening, what is the up and the downside risk of a fund? 
so the sharp ratio has always has to be um, so this has to be like anywhere between uh, 1 and 2 that's like considered as a good value here and anything that is over 3 is has considered to be excellent none of these mutual funds would have a value like more than 3 so you could see here like anywhere between 2 to 3 is also considered as considered as very good so in this case i would give uh, 5 to uh, nippon because they seem to have a value which is between 2 to 3 and uh, followed by uh, hsbc that's going to be your 4 and uh, tata is going to be 3 quant is 4 and hdfc is 5 is 1 so that's how i'm trying to order them and uh, the next one is alpha uh, it's a benchmark index which is giving against the growth rate of a uh, mutual fund so normally there is a rule of thumb in the market it, it should always be that in a case that alpha should always be higher and beta should always be lower that shows the or uh, that's uh, that's an indicator or the kind of thing that will tell you which of the mutual fund is like really good so in this case uh, higher the alpha it gives you a better growth rate lower the beta that helps you into uh, mitigate your risk during market uh, downfall so whenever there is a fluctuation in the market the lower beta value will always gives you a reduced uh, risk so that is going to be uh, a lower value so here i'm going to consider a higher alpha value so in this uh, uh, situation quant is going to score 5 followed by nippon which is uh, 4 followed by tata 3 hsbc 4 and hdfc is like 1 so this is the value which I'm getting here again. You could see the scorecard again. Uh, the values are getting compounded here or getting added up here, followed by the beta. The beta value has to be the lowest possible. In my case, the lowest beta is uh, Tata that gets the score 5, followed by uh, HSBC that gets 4, followed by uh, Nippon that gets 3, and uh, HDFC gets 2, and uh, beta of uh, Quant is 1 that gets 1 point for me. Then again comes your uh, Sortino. This Sortino is again uh, one of the uh, key factor which also helps you in uh, uh, evaluating a mutual fund. So that helps you into uh, evaluating your additional uh, results or returns when there is a downfall in the market. So the AMC managers, they do try to sort out these funds and they try to make out a, a profit when there is a downside risk happening in the mutual fund. So this is going to be a, a, an indicator where we consider the Sortino values to be higher. So Sortino value is like really higher in this case, I would say the first priority or the five points is going to be scored by HSBC, followed by four points with Nippon and three with uh, Tata and uh, two with HDFC and one with uh, Quant. So again, coming back to the uh, turnover ratio, the higher the portfolio turnover, you are going to incur a lot of uh, cost in terms of uh, capital gains. Also, in terms of transaction costs, your STT, GST, all those gets added up to your uh, mutual funds. When the mutual fund manager sells these AMCs, they normally get added up and over. So, your uh, portfolio turnover, this has to be like uh, uh, lower. So, lower the value, it's always going to be a very good mutual fund. So, in this case, I'm going to look out for a mutual fund that's got a lower uh, uh, turnover ratio. So, here uh, the first priority goes to um, HDFC with 7, so that's going to be like a 5 point followed by uh, HSBC which is going to be uh, 4, Hit Tata is going to be 3, Nippon is going to be four, 2 and the Quant is going to be 1. So these risk metrics will help you to evaluate uh, any mutual fund. So whenever you are trying to sort them with this kind of a uh, tablet sheet and try to evaluate like which is better, try to give them a scored car value like this and try to evaluate which one is better than this. Then the third parameter which I'm going to try here is nothing but your expense ratio. So expense ratio is nothing but uh, it's the uh, expense that is incurred by every AMC. So whenever they are valuing or like maintaining up an asset, they have to pay the fees of your manager and their distribution expenses and their legal fees, auditing fees and their operating costs, whatever it is. So they always uh, look out for uh, the expense ratio, which is really less. So, for example, you are starting an SAP for uh, 1000 rupees and uh, you are trying to have an expense ratio of uh, uh, 1%, which means like 1% of your 1000 is going to be invested as the uh, expense ratio. So, this money gets cut and the remainder amount is getting invested in your uh, mutual fund. So, always look out for expense ratio, which is really less. So, in this case, uh, the expense ratio of Tata mutual fund is going to be really small. It's just 0.32 followed by... Uh, uh, it is going to be HSBC and then uh, followed by Nippon, then HSBC, 
then it is going to be uh, HDFC and the last preference would be like quant. So these expense ratio normally increases as well when a, when a fund is like performing really good, the uh, AMC or the uh, mutual fund manager normally tries to increase up the expense ratio because they often sell the script and they try to buy them and like this uh, uh, turnover thing automatically happens every often. So this normally try to increase as whenever there is a buy and sale of script which is going to be happening. Then the another point to consider here is nothing but the exit load. So exit load is like uh, nothing but the amount which gets debited from your account when you are trying to exit from your stock market. Say for example, you have invested in the stock market or in your mutual fund for about three months and for some reason you try to exit out of the month, the mutual fund, you want your money back. So when you are trying to pull out your money, the mutual fund normally tries to charge 1% of the value. There are a lot of funds uh, which uh, gives you uh, exit load free mutual funds that are available. You can search out for them in your uh, when you are trying to evaluate or when you are trying to choose a mutual fund, you can choose funds with exit load as zero. But all of these small cap funds as they are really volatile and they are making up a lot of money, they are churning out a lot of uh, uh, crores and crores of money in the market, they always try to have an exit load because their uh, AUM value is like really huge. So there is only one mutual fund here which is a clear winner which is uh, Nippon. It shows up uh, the um, exit load of just 30 days. So that is the least minimum which is there available in the market. So all of these mutual funds are again available to be get invested with a minimum of 1000 rupees as uh, uh, the SAP starter. And again Nippon has got a hold there. That is the only mutual fund which allows you to start with uh, just 500 rupees of uh, investment as well. So your SAPs can be started even as low as 500 with the help of uh, Nippon mutual fund. So that becomes uh, the score of 5 for Nippon and all the others I would give it just 4 on this. Then uh, last parameter what I am going to look out is the holding pattern. So the holding pattern is nothing but uh, the uh, list of uh, uh, the equities the mutual funds are holding. So normally the equal, um, every equity is like bought by the mutual funds depending on their own choice as per their manager, the AMC managers. So the uh, concentration of the mutual fund shows up uh, which mutual funds are being held or uh, taken position by these. Uh, they have some kind of an uh, algorithm which is working in the back end which tells them which are the scripts to be bought from these market to into their portfolio. So the more the concentrated the portfolio, it is like trying to go, give you a better return but when there is a downfall, when there is a risk which is incurred, say for example there was a COVID times when the market fell drastically, it was bloodbath on the market. So at times like that these uh, concentric mutual fund takes the biggest toll. They try to like drop down really crazy, their NAV automatically gets reduced when their concentration is really huge. So here if you happen to see that uh, um, the concentration of the top 5 mutual funds, almost all of them are like uh, really good. But Nippon has an advantage here, they are just holding up 9% of their portfolio in their top 5 funds. So even their top 5 funds are like having up just 9% in their portfolio. In the top 20 as well, you could see they are just holding 28 so if you happen to see their holding pattern, so each company is these uh, mutual funds, they try to hold as many scripts as possible. Say for example, 150 company or uh, 200 companies, they try to make a allocation or pool of 200 companies, they try to add them and they try to sort them depending on their turnover ratio, depending on their portfolio value and they just try to add up in their top 5, in their top 20 uh, list. So in this case, I would give a plus always to Nippon, followed by I would say it would be um, um, HSBC is the second, then uh, third would be uh, HDFC, fourth would be Tata, the fifth would be Quant. So that's how it is going to be. So adding up these values, you could see here that you could see the clear winner here. You'll be able to see the list of mutual fund which is showing up in the top value. So these are the values which are out of 50. So out of 50, you will be able to see like which mutual fund has scored up uh, really huge. So after this evaluation, we'll be able to see that the scorecards here are out and uh, we see an out of scale of about uh, 50, we'll be able to see where each of these mutual funds stand. So the number one in the charts is backed up by Tata's, so with over 38 points and followed by Nippon with uh, 37 points, with HSBC on 36 points. The others are followed by HSD, HDFC and Quanta. As I said, again, all of these funds are really good. It's not that like Tata's are the best and uh, HDFC and Quants isn't. But uh, this is just an evaluation done by me on different parameters and this is the scorecard which I have evaluated. I am invested in all of these funds and this is just a small uh, experiment which I did to evaluate which one is the better among these lists. 
So if I were to invest, I would invest more major of my chunk into Tata's followed with uh, HSBC and Nippon. So uh, do leave your comments below on which one you prefer among this list and uh, which one is your uh, SAP of your choice or the mutual fund of your choice. And uh, if you want me to make videos like this, do leave your comments below and uh, do subscribe to the channel for watching such videos. Thank you.